It's time to go hardcore, okay? None of that weak sauce algorithm that we've been doing in the past. Union find, ugh, Dijkstra's yuck. Prims and crustles, like what the heck? That is easy peasy lemon squeezy. We are battle hardened veteran algorithmers, okay? We don't need to take no for an answer. We're gonna get a challenge, okay? Bring on the beast. Hello everybody, I'm Karar, and today we're gonna be doing a very, very hard algorithm that is basically only applicable to gold. It is a very, very hard, golden platinum algorithm. Today we're going to be talking about the beast of an algorithm, heavy light decomposition. I can't tell whether that sounds cool or not. Like honestly, heavy light is like, sounds cool, but it also does. Like what the heck is heavy light? That doesn't even sound cool. What the heck? But don't worry, it's so cool. You'll see my beautifully disgusting code in a couple minutes. And also, if you're wondering about the hair, this is what happens when you have a break and you don't feel like combing your hair, okay? Chill. All right, so the first thing we gotta do is figure out what this troll algorithm does, okay? So just like with every single algorithm in the world that we cover, basically, it deals with trees. Let's draw a beautiful tree. Happy, we have okay, fine. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I know I made this joke 69 times, but it's still funny. Right, right? It's, it's, you guys are laughing now, I swear. All right, so this is our actual tree, okay? And basically what heavy light decomposition lets us do is it lets us figure out stuff for every single path on this tree. So let's say that we gave each vertex a number. So right now we, they all have their indices, right? But why don't we assign them like a weight or something? All right, so now I put weights on all of them. And basically what heavy light decomp lets you do is let's say I say the path from one to three, and I want to find out what the weight, some of the weights of all the vertexes on the path are. Heavy light decomposition will give us five plus seven plus nine and 12 plus nine is equal to 21. Wow, I did arithmetic successfully. Mission accomplished, we don't even need to do heavy light decomp. Or you could just ask it like 1, 9, find me the sum, and I'll do 9 plus 2 plus 1, and it'll give you 12. But then you might be thinking, oh, this is so easy. Why can't we just go from 1 to 9 and just add everything up? Well, it turns out finding the path actually takes a long time. Like, if we apply Dijkstra's, it would take n time in order to find the path from 1 to 9. And if we had to do that like n times as well, that's going to take n squared time, and this is not going to cut it. Heavy light decomp, on the other hand, actually takes n log n time, so it's pretty epic. Beautiful n log n works for basically everything. All right, so how does it work? So the first thing we gotta do is we gotta root the tree. So like right now this tree is just like flying around and there's no like specific root. Basically what rooting a tree does is it sets one root to be the top root and everything drops down from there. So basically the first step is to decompose this guy in the chains, okay? So basically what heavy light decomposition stands for is heavy and light chains and you wanna decompose it into those heavy and light chains. So the way we gotta do that is we're gonna start from the very top. And we're gonna start by numbering it one. Or let's just, yeah, one, one works. This is gonna be the head of our chain. Now, we wanna add to our chain, but basically the way we're gonna add it, we can either add two, five, or seven, but we're gonna add the one that has the most children. So in this case, seven has like a subtree of four, like there's four things in this, right? And then there's two in here, and then there's three in here, which is the biggest, obviously it's seven. So we're gonna add, seven to the chain with one, and then we're gonna label it two. And then we go to seven, and we are like, we had to extend our chain more. So we can choose between eight, nine, and 10. However, all of these are exactly the same number of elements in their subtree, so we could just choose one. We'll choose eight, but other cool. And we'll blame it, we got a chain. Cause this is as far as the chain goes, we just stop the chain there. Cause we can't go past eight. And then we label eight as three. All right, now we're running this as DFS. So basically we go back up to seven, and then we go back to 10. However, we want to make every single node a part of a chain, but 10 can't be part of any chain. If we connected it over here, this wouldn't be a chain anymore. It'd be like a splitty into two-y thingy. So 10 is going to have to be in a chain by itself, and then we'll label it four. Same for nine. We're just going to circle it. It's in a chain by itself, and it's going to be five. All right, now we're done with this. We go back up, and now we go to two, because now it doesn't really matter. We'll just go to the first uh, child of this node. Okay, now two could be the head of a chain because it does have children. However, both of its children have the same size subtrees. So we'll basically just choose one and we'll choose three and this will make a chain by itself. And we'll label this with six and then three comes after two. So this is gonna be seven. And then we go back up and then four has to be by itself. So it's gonna be eight. And then we go all the way back up to one. And the last thing that we have to do is five and six. So we go down to five, we label it as nine. And then the only way to make it part of a chain is just to chain it with six and then label six as 10. Now notice how every single node that is part of a chain 
is like numbered consecutively with everything else in its chain, right? So basically what we could do is you can make a segment tree. Now what a segment tree lets us do is it basically lets us find the sum of any range on these chains. Let me just put this into an array to explain how this works. So basically we're gonna have our first one has a weight of nine, then two has a weight of two over here, and then three has a weight of one, and then four has a weight of one, and then five has a weight of one, and then six has a weight of seven over here, and then seven has a weight of five, and then eight has a weight of eight, and then nine has a weight of six, and 10 has a weight of four. Okay, so we have an array, and if we do a segment tree on this array, we could find the sum of any range of these numbers. So if I wanted to find the sum of the weights on any chain, we just find the sum from here to here, which is from one to two, for example, and we got it right here. And a segment tree could give that, us that really quickly. If we wanted the sum from one to three, we would just take this sum here and the segment tree would give that quickly as well. All right, so now that we have it in chains and we know that we could find the sum of the weights on any like length of a chain, how do we actually find the length of an entire path that might span multiple chains? All right, we're gonna switch over to a more complicated tree in order to explain this part because for my tree, it was not very complicated and it wouldn't have shown the true power of HLD. So we're gonna use this tree, which I got from an example that geek for geeks uses in their article. geek for geeks has a really good article on HLD. That's how I learned HLD. So if you wanna have like a written down thing that you can look at at your leisure, just go check them out. They got some epic stuff. So together, let's just divide this up in a chain, okay? So this is a good opportunity to just practice what we just learned. And basically we start at one, right? And we'll label it as one. Then we look at its three children. So this has six children in it. This has three, this has one. So the biggest one is quite clearly two, so we'll go to two, and then we'll label two with the two. Okay, now we had to choose between five and six. Clearly six has more children, so we're gonna go to six and label this as three. Then eight's the only option, so that's four, and then it doesn't matter here, so this is gonna be five. And then we go back up to eight, and then it's the only other child is 11, so this is gonna be six, and it's gonna be by itself. Okay, then we go up to eight, then we go up to six, then we go up to two, and it has another child, which is five, but that's gonna have to be alone as well, so that's alone, and it's seven. Okay, then we go up to two, then we go up to one, then we go down to three, and three is gonna be the head of a new chain, and it basically just chains downward because it only has one child each, and then four is gonna be by itself. Whoop, forgot a number then. So this was seven, so this was next. Eight, nine, 10, and then four was last, so it's 11. Okay, so now we've done that, very epic. Now we can apply HLD and find out how to find the sum of the weights of a path along different chains. So basically the example that uh, Geeks for Geeks uses is 11 to nine, because it goes through a bunch of chains. See, like 11 is in one chain, then it has to go to this chain, and then it has to go down to this chain. So basically the first step in order to find the sum of the weights is to first find the LCA, least common ancestor, you better know what that is. If you don't know who your ancestor is, you quite clearly are not a cultured soul. But basically in CS, the lowest node in the tree that contains both of the other two vertices in its subtree is called the least common ancestor. So if we try to figure this out, let's try to say we look at two. Two has 11 in its subtree but it does not have nine in its subtree. So unfortunately, that's not the LCA. Three, unfortunately, only has nine in its subtree, so that doesn't work. Four just doesn't have either in its subtree, but one has both in its subtree. See, its subtree is the whole tree, so both 11 and nine are in its subtree, so it is the LCA. So now, what we basically wanna do, in order to find the overall sum, we're basically gonna sum up this right here, this path over here. We're gonna sum up this path over here, and then we're gonna subtract out this one over here because we counted it twice. So basically, the strategy for counting the sum from 11 to one is the same strategy as counting from nine to one. So let's first do it from 11 to one. So basically, our first step is to check. Is our current node, we're gonna say we're currently at 11, is our current node in the same chain as the LCA? Nuh-uh, no it isn't. So what we do is we add six, which is the weight of our current node to our running total, and then we move up to the previous parent of this node. All right, now we're at eight, but now eight is in the same chain as our LCA. So in this case, we can immediately use our segment tree that we found earlier in order to find the sum. So our segment tree is just gonna give us that the sum over here is nine plus five is 14, and we immediately get that the sum is 20. See how much faster HLD made this? If we hadn't had HLD, we'd have to start at 11, do sum six, then go to eight, sum two, then go to six, sum three, then go to two, and we had to do it one by one by one, and that's so boring. Why would you want to do that when you could use HLD? Well, I mean, it's easier, but this is so much faster, so much faster.
So we saw the cool thing that HLD could do where you could just jump from 8 to the LC8. Now another cool thing you could do is let's say that we're trying to find from 9 to our LC8. So we'll start here. Now is 9 in the same chain as our LC8? No it isn't. However, we can jump immediately to the head of our current chain. So we can immediately jump to 3. We already know the sum of this whole chain, which our segment tree will give us as 5 plus 3 plus 2 is 10. And then without even having to look at this 3, we could just immediately jump to the parent of the chain of the head. No, what? No, the parent of the head of the chain. There we go, we know how to English. And see, we're already at our LCA. So basically we just add in the 5 over here and immediately we get 15. See, we were able to jump from 9 to 3 because of our HLD, so it makes it a lot faster. But now since we're at our LCA, we're done. So basically we have, whoops, it's not 2, it's 20. Now we have 20, 15, we add 20 plus 15. Then we subtract out the LCA, minus 5, and we get our total pass length as 30, which is correcto. Very cool. So basically the two things you have to keep track of when you're doing HLD is that you could immediately jump to the LCA if it's in the same chain as you, or you could immediately jump to the head of your chain if the LCA is not in the same chain as you. And by you, I mean like the card node, which is represented by the green arrow. Now before you show you the code, I'll just show you how to do LCA like really quickly. So basically what you do is you basically traverse the graph. So you start with one, okay, and then you go down to two, and then you go down to five, then you go back up to two. So you put this back in here, and then you go down to the eight, go to the nine, back up to the eight, down to the 10, back up to the eight, then back up to the two, then down to the 6, back up to the 2, up to the 1, back down to the 3, up to the 1, down to the 4, down to the 7, back to the 4, and back to the 1. Okay, now basically the way you do this is you make a segment tree over this array that we just generated. And then, let's say we wanted to find the least common ancestor of 8 and of 9 and 6, let's say. So 9 shows up here, right? And 6 shows up here. So we take this range of the array from 9 to 6, and we say which node in this array has the highest height, which is like the highest up in the tree. Or you could say lowest depth, that works too. So in this case, 8 is pretty low, 10 is not low, 8 is low, 2 in fact is the lowest. So 2 is in fact the common ancestor, which makes sense. And if you do this with a segment tree, it's a lot faster and it works in n log n time, which is good enough for most use of problems. Okay, so basically I wanted to explain this HLD in terms of a problem. So. The most famous version is Calendar. So basically this problem from the Use the Code 2019 February Contest Gold and it basically depends on uh, Heavy Light Decomp. So basically what they do is they give you a bunch of weights, so they're this, and then they give you a bunch of tabs, and then they give you a bunch of queries where they can either change the number on one of the uh, amusement park attractions or they can ask for the sum of the weights overall. Or in this case, they said XOR instead of SUM, but it's basically the same thing. So this over here is my code for it, and it's pretty nasty, but let me just walk you through it. So basically, these two methods are just the typical segment tree stuff for the LCA. And the reason why it has a pair pair parent int here is so that I could associate a height with each of those nodes in that array that we made. Because we wanted to find the one with the least height, right? So there's no way to find the least height unless we associate a height with it. All right, and then get LCA is basically you just use their segment tree to find the minimum on that range. And then this over here is just doing the traverse where you go one, down to two, down to three, back up to two, blah, 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 that kind of thing. All right, and then here is our HDL, which basically, this part finds which is the max child of it, so which one has the biggest subtree, and then it recurses on it, and it goes down and adds that to the chain. And then once it's done creating this chain, it'll go on and start new chains on the other of its children. And then this is just another segment tree thing, so this is how you do a bitwise XOR. So instead of using addition, I'm just going to use an XOR. And then this is just to get a range, like get the XOR of a range of numbers. Okay, so now the interesting part is the get path. So basically what I did is you get the LCA first, and then you set car to your current chain. So it's basically the chain that a that one of your nodes is in. And then you set the current node to one of your endpoints. And then a length is just going to keep track of our overall um, like length or overall like XOR. So if the LCA is not in the same chain, then we basically uh, jump to the head of the current chain and then we add the length from our current node to the head of that chain and then we go to the top of that chain 
like to the parent of that chain. That's what P basically throws. P basically throws the parent of that chain. And then you do the same for your other one, and then you XOR the two uh, uh, A length and B length, and then you XOR the LCA. Because like XORing is like it negates itself, so basically subtracting is the same as just XORing again. And then here's just the rest of it, which is just reading it in and uh, applying the formulas and stuff. Okay, very epic, but because it's so satisfying to see the green on Yusuko, let's just submit this and see what happens. Now the reason why I didn't live solve it is because it took me so long to write the code, because I, I, I just haven't like coded heavy light decomp ever, so this took me a really long time to do, which is why I didn't live code it, but there you go. Very, very epic. Alrighty, thank you guys for watching. If you guys want more of these crash courses, just let me know. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Let me know down in the comments what you guys want to see. I'm still looking for suggestions. Thank you guys so much for what you guys have given me so far. And other than that, thank you guys for watching again, and see you guys next time. Bro, my voice is still dying. Ugh.